Well, good afternoon, West in the World, and welcome to your uh, first review video for this new semester in CP195 for spring semester 2015. It's uh, January the 22nd, Thursday afternoon, and this morning uh, the center of our uh, conversation, or the, the theme of our lecture, uh, was the concept of, of Europe's widening world. And uh, we covered a lot of ground this morning, uh, both geographically and chronologically. That will never be the case again, or at least not on the scale that it was today, but we were trying to do uh, two things. Uh, one was trying to suggest some of the, the common touch points, the uh, reference points uh, that lie in the sort of deep past, but that tend to crop up uh, quite frequently in discussions of uh, the history of the West uh, to suggest the movement from uh, the development of sedentary agriculture in the Fertile Crescent in ancient Egypt through uh, the civilizations of ancient Greece and ancient Rome and into uh, the medieval world. These developments are foundational, but we don't have time to explore any of them in detail. Uh, we did sort of emphasize the idea of the feudal order and the way in which society was organized into those three classes, those who fight, those who work, those who pray, and said that this is going to be an, an enduring concept, one that we need to, to sort of keep an eye on as we talk about the big changes uh, ahead in this semester. And, and then we introduced ourselves to the idea of the Black Death, uh, the coming of the bubonic plague, and that is a symbol, perhaps, of, of the beginnings of a transition that, that marks uh, a new age in Western history. Uh, we turned our attention then, we sort of pivoted from the question of, well, what are the touch points leading Europe to this uh, particular age, uh, to the question of how is Europe beginning to interact with the world at large? And we saw that, uh, by most standards, Europe has been uh, fairly inward, uh, not terribly well connected to its world through the medieval period, but that in the late Middle Ages, it is beginning to sort of break out of this, motivated in part by the experience of the Crusades and a, a variety of other factors. So what you'll want to do is, is make sure that you can understand what are the motives for this uh, increased interaction with the world, whether overland exploration like that of Marco Polo, or the maritime exploration of Portuguese-funded sailors by Diaz uh, and da Gama, and ultimately, of course, the Spanish voyages of, of Christopher Columbus. Uh, what are they uh, attempting to accomplish? What are their goals? What are their hopes uh, in, these, uh, in these encounters? Uh, we left off, of course, with the discovery of the New World beginning in 1492, and the transformations of European social and economic life that are occurring uh, as a consequence of this. We highlighted uh, the, uh, the uh, impact of New World silver, uh, the growth of a sugar plantation economy, and, and ultimately uh, the development of a transatlantic system of trade that lies right at the bedrock level uh, of many of the, uh, of the developments we will discuss uh, later on. We'll return to those themes, and particularly to the issue of the transatlantic slave trade, and talk about its, its influence uh, later on. But here, uh, for the moment, it's simple enough to simply to say that in a very early stage in this narrative, in this story that we're building, uh, the institution of slavery figures prominently uh, in the overall calculation. All these things uh, we will continue to discuss in the weeks ahead. So I hope uh, as we go to continue making these videos as a way of helping sort of refresh your memory and, and orient you to uh, the highlights or the major themes uh, of each class period. Uh, looking forward to seeing you back on Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everybody.